John. Thanks for joining us on BPM Radio. Thanks for having me. Now, you've been to Australia twice before. This would be your third time. What do you most like about coming to Australia? Uh, everyone's really nice here, um, apart from anywhere else in the world, I guess. Um, no, it's great. It's um, good weather and, and people are happy and they party and yeah, it's good to be here. How would you say that playing in Australia is different to playing anywhere else in the world that you've played at? Um, I mean, it used to, the first time I came here, I was surprised because everyone was really just up for it and really interested in music and it's, it's sort of like in US right now, Australia, I think they, but you have it, you've had it for a longer time, I guess. Um, this is a good party crowd. And I understand you come from a musical family. Your mum was a singer, your dad was a drummer and your cousin a DJ. What role did your cousin play in your uh, in the early stages of your career? He, uh, I got a CD from him when I was I don't know, twelve or thirteen, um, and I've never he- I never heard stuff like that. So I, it sort of got me into the whole thing, to be honest. And um, yeah, he's still a good inspiration for me, and he's always been doing really good, nice stuff. And yeah, so it's, it's not been helping that much with productions and stuff I always wanted to do that on my own but he's um, yeah he's been a big inspiration and what do you like working in the studio do you like working by yourself or do you like collaborating a lot with others Uh, both like I like being in the studio alone but I like collaborating with people not in the studio I prefer not to have them there I just like emailing them you know, do stuff online and stuff. I don't want to. I don't want people in my studio except for my uh, assistant. And what software are you using at the moment to produce your tracks? Cubase. Have you always used Cubase? Yes, since day one. I've been using one of the earlier versions um, in the beginning. That was really awful, but um, yeah, I've 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 stayed true to uh, Cubase. What about the issue of writer's block? I mean, a lot of artists talk about writer's block. Do you, do you get that, and how do you overcome that? Yeah, I have it all the time. Um, but it's just, I don't know, just continuing to try usually gets it off. And I don't know, what, if I'm longer in the studio and I, I have it in the beginning, I usually don't have it in, by the end of the session. Uh, usually it comes after a while. And how quick are you at actually at producing your tracks? Like, does it take you long, or do you nut, nut, nut them out pretty quickly? I used to be really quick. Like, I used to like one or two hours per track. Um, so in a in a day's work, I would easily finish three or four tracks. But now I'm I'm I've slowed down. I don't know if I'm I don't know if it's, if I'm getting older and like slower, like slower, <laughs> or if I'm just being more careful. And what would you say was your breakthrough moment? Would you say that that was back when you were 15? It's sort of been um, steady going up. Um, there are a few moments that are that have been bigger. and um, But I mean, ever since I started releasing tracks, it's been going better and better. And, and I, I'm really happy about not having like a big track to start off with I, I came from like a, a lot of releases before something happened and um, you know it's it's not easy getting a um, you know your first big track but it's it's more difficult to to continue to make it and out of all the tracks that you've actually made do you have a favorite that you've produced um, I guess um, there are a few coming out that that are really good. The best is yet to come. I think so. Yeah, I mean, uh, at least as as far as production goes, like I'm really happy with how how it sounds now. Um, back in the days, it used to be very on and off. Like I didn't care so much about how it sounded. I just wanted to get it out there. But now it's um, yeah, I'm really happy how things sound. And you've played at Tomorrowland. Tell tell the people that don't know that have never experienced playing at such a big festival. What's what what went through your head when you were playing up there on stage? What was the feeling like? 
When I first came to Tomorrowland, that was um, five or six years ago. Um, I didn't know anything about the festival. I just got there, I came from the back entrance and didn't see anything. And then I just ran up on stage and it was like 40,000 people. And I, I don't know, I, it was weird. Um, but then, you know, I went there year after year and played and it's always been great and, you know, a great stage and, you know, Belgium crowds are normally kind of standing still and, um, I don't know, they're not going off as much as they do on Tomorrowland, so it's great to be there. What about when you actually got back to the hotel room that night? What was that like, just coming down from the adrenaline and just reflecting on what you had just achieved? Um, to be honest, I, I can't remember. Um, I just went off stage and thinking this was the best show I've ever done and, um, and then continuing to go there every year has been really good. I don't, I don't sort of, I, I'm, I get adrenaline, adrenaline, but I don't like panic afterwards and where, where I go is go to sleep, I guess. <laughs> now, is there anything in the, your career that you haven't achieved that you'd like to achieve? I think more like scoring for movies or video games or stuff like that is really interesting to me. Uh, I love making all sorts of music, not only house, but um, just listening to music as well. Um, I would like to get the opportunity to one day score for something, you know, to to make a movie better with with good music. Is that something that you've got plans to do in the fu in the near future? We've had some opportunities uh, when it comes to video games, and um, but I guess the the goal is to like okay, let's make this video game from scratch. You're in there from the beginning, and you know make the music. You always get like, oh, this video game want to use this track for the game so you're not actually a part of it so I want to be a, a part of the whole thing part of the whole process yeah now I mean it's pretty self-explanatory now and I know because I've seen it in the past what do you like doing your part-time games obviously you like playing a lot of video games I do um, I don't know rest rest of the time I just um, spend it with my family I guess it's like family games that's what I do <laughs> I guess. family and games now, are you working on anything at the moment that you can tell us about? Yeah, so this is sort of the year for collaborations. I, I just, or no, tomorrow, what, is it Thursday? Tomorrow, um, me and Ben Benassi release Blink again, which is the first collaboration for this year. And then I have one with Rebecca and Fiona uh, that's coming out in summer. I have a track on... Romero's Protocol coming out in May, I think. And then there are a few other tracks coming out that uh, I'm very excited about. And what advice can you give up and coming DJs and producers that want to make it in the industry? Uh, just to uh, sort of s stick to what they like and not, you know, if, if Avicii is your favorite producer, don't try to sound exactly like him because, you know, then everyone will think you sound just like him. So just try to um, do music that you like and try to stick out a little bit because, you know, Beatport has a million tracks coming out every day and you have to be one of them that sticks out. And what would you say is the most challenging part about being in the industry? To stick out uh, and, you know, to, to um, try to stay accurate and and sort of prove that, you know, you can still make music and you can sound uh, fresh and, you know, come out with new ideas and be original and, yeah, that's, it's, it's tough because the competition is really big right now. Now, before you actually get up there on stage, do you have any pre-gig rituals? Um... No, like I, I usually get into a show five minutes before I start and then I leave straight after. So it's not really, 
I can, I'm a calm person and then once I'm up on stage, I'm not, I'm not freaking out. Uh, I'm not a clown. I, I try to at least show people that I enjoy myself too. And I don't know, the only thing I have is this um, Swedish tobacco, I guess. I, it calms me down when I'm playing. And how do you manage your time? Because I mean, you're also the owner of a label, Mutants. How, I mean, how do you manage your time to do the touring, doing DJing, doing your podcast, to look, look at all the promotional tracks that are coming in from the up and coming DJs? How do you find the time? I do a lot of work uh, in air on planes, like uh, if I'm behind on making a mix for my podcast or um, if I do a remix, I do that on a plane or in a hotel room. I try to um, not do that much work when I'm at home. So when I'm home, I'm home. I don't want to do anything else. And then when I'm in the studio, I work on music and then, yeah, it, it, it comes together pretty good. I have a good manager that that keeps everything in, um, up to date. And I've heard you say before that you can basically tell just in, within a few seconds whether or not a track that you've heard suits your label. What is it that you actually look for in these tracks? I usually skip through, um, the first skip is through the break and if I hear melodies that stick out I'm probably going to take it if it sounds good. Uh, the sound isn't that important to me in the beginning, That's always that can always change. But if the ideas are there, then you know we can work on that. Uh, so I skip through to the first break and then the drop to see whether a track is good. So yeah, and usually around three, four seconds I can hear if the track is good or not. Any particular genres? Um, well, for my label, I, I um, we stick to sort of electro house, I guess. Um, yeah, or house. Yes, yeah, it's, it's house. Yeah. And finally, what do you have planned for 2014? Um, so six or seven tracks on the way um, until the end of the year, and just a lot of touring and actually vacation quite much in the summer. So that's nice. So I'm happy about this year. Well, actually, just before we go, you're actually touring around Australia at the moment. Have you played anywhere yet? No, tonight is the first uh, show, so I'm doing two shows, one in Geelong and then one at 7 here in Melbourne. Well, all the best and thank you very much for joining us on BPM Radio Australia. We look forward to seeing you tonight at 7. Thanks for having me. Hi, this is Sean Dalby, you're watching BPM Radio Australia.